now we will understand the factors that are affecting or impacting the impacting the balance of payments of a country so for to understand that we have to separately understand the factors that are affecting both the current account and the capital account now first we will see the factors that are impacting the current account of a country so if we see those factors first thing is rate of inflation Good morning, students. Welcome back to Blue to Science. Right. Today is our fifty-fifth day, and today we will discuss about the balance of payments. Right. So this is also very important topic. We have got many questions from this topic also previously. So other thing is we are come to the coming to the end of economics topic. Right. Apart from this balance of payments, we have one more topic that is. WTO and India. So tomorrow we will be discussing that topic. So after that topic, we will be going to into the history. So with the economics completion of the economics, we will be completing in total four major topics. Apart from that, one or two other major subjects will be there. We will also try to cover them. Right. So try to utilize the videos because I believe they are informative, and you can cover a very good portion of the prelims. Uh, if you have the understanding of these basic issues, you will be in a better position to answer the questions. So try to utilize the lectures. Right now we will come to the topic. The topic is balance of payments. Right. So you know very well about the budget. so budget it has many uh, we can say parts or uh, aspects there are many aspects to the budget so one of the aspect is that is current account capital account or uh, i mean re revenue expenditure is there uh, capital expenditure there so all these aspects are there so similarly the balance of payments it also Uh, plays an important role in the preparation of the budget also and the ba balance of payments this context, context uh, sorry concept it gives the picture of the economy whether the economy is healthy or not healthy there are problems with the economy right similarly balance of payments will also have a current account component and also capital account component in that current account component one of the important sub category we can say most important sub category is balance of trade so you should be we will be studying about all these aspects uh, you can broadly say india had or india has problems uh, when it comes to balance of payments especially in the area of balance of trade so because balance of trade comprises especially the export of goods and services especially the visible goods and services so in this uh, that is the weak area uh, when it comes to india so we are importing lot of goods and services uh, and we have we can say trade deficit when it comes to balance of trade however it will be covered to a large extent by uh, our exports such as uh, export i mean it it will be covered by there is a component called invisibles 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 comprises basically the remittances M major important component is remittances and also the grants in aid will also come here grants in aid and other things are there like exchanges etc so we are able to cover our balance of uh, we can say deficit deficit in balance of pay, payments or for that matter in balance of trade through these invisibles so right so try to away i mean be aware of all these aspects so all these uh, things i i be i believe you will be covering well in the uh, your budget preparation budget and economic survey preparation right so try to be uh, aware of the figures right so mostly here i am focusing on the conceptual part only 
because if you see the previous papers the questions mostly uh, they have been asked mostly from the conceptual part only however in the end briefly i'll try to cover the uh, we can say latest trends in certain aspects uh, like the foreign exchange so when there is a surplus in the balance of payments aspect we will have more foreign exchange i mean we will be having the surplus of the foreign exchange when there is a deficit in the balance of payments the foreign exchange will go away so india because of one thing i have said the remittances so because of remittances and second thing is huge flow of foreign investments both foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment or foreign institutional investments so because of these two major reasons india is able to cover the deficit part especially that is coming from the balance of trade trade part we could cover those aspect and still we could save some foreign exchange save foreign exchange so because of this reason our foreign exchange reserves are at a very healthy rate very healthy rate and we stand approximately fifth position in the world when it comes to total foreign reserves uh, across the world so whenever a country is having foreign good foreign exchange reserves it is going to help that country in a much better way right so these things we also try to cover later in this lecture right so we will start with the definition of the balance of uh, payments so it is a balance of payment is a systematic record of transactions between a country's economic units such as households uh, farms governments and uh, the rest of the world so it is a transaction between said a country let's say india and all the major units comprising in it that is households farms and uh, even the government and the other uh, other side it's interaction or exchange with the rest of the world rest of the world all right so the transactions will include transactions among individuals corporations and even between the governments so these are the all the actors that will be involving in the transactions between india and the rest of the world if we try to understand the importance why balance of payments is important uh right if we see the significance it is very important because it will give the health of the economy it will work or it gives the health of the economy it is a good indicator of the uh, actual economic performance of a country next is currency value indicator so based on the balance of payments whether the balance balance of payments are in surplus or in deficit the value of a country's currency will be decided for example rupee so the value of uh, our country uh, the value of the rupee which is the currency of our country will be decided also on the we can say factor of the balance of payments so if a country is having surplus in balance of payments that value of that country's currency tend to be we can say higher so one of the reasons we we are seeing recently uh, there is lot of depreciation in the value of rupee because we are not having favorable situation in the balance of payments especially in the balance of trade so when we talk about india our major concern is the balance of trade because we are importing lot of goods and services that is the major problem our imports uh, exceed way ahead when we compare our exports exports to other countries even in the exports uh, imports also the major concerns are uh, previously also i have uh, mentioned them one thing is we are importing crude oil so we have to import uh, crude oil because the economy is very much dependent on the energy so energy sources uh, the crude oil is one of the major energy sources from crude crude oil we will get the petrol and diesel so much of the energy is coming from this uh, i mean crude oil only next we are a gold loving country we are importing lot of gold right so these are some of the we can say areas we are where we have dependent way much on imports another aspect also i have mentioned electronics 
Electronics also, we are dependent heavily on imports, especially the segments like mobile phones. So our concern is when we talk about India, our concern is balance of trade. So because we are weak in balance of trade, our rupee value is when we compare to the important world currencies like dollar, euro, even the Chinese currency, renminbi. So the Indian rupee is valued very less. This is the reason. So balance of payments, it also becomes one of the impact important factor in deciding the value of a country's currency. Next is policy decision. So based on the balance of payment situation only, the financial policy or the economic policy of a country will also be depending. Next is insights into economic dealings. So the BOP statement, it offers crucial insights into a country's economic interactions with other countries. Right. So this is the significance of the uh, balance of payments. So uh, if we talk about the balance of payments, BOP, there will be, we will study it under two components. One is current account. Next is capital account. So balance of payments will be studied under two major components. The, those two major components are current account and the capital account. So here first we will study about the current account. Right. First we will try and understand about the current account. Next we will uh, try and understand about the capital account and we will also see the factors contributing for current account and also the factors impacting the capital account. Right. If we see the definition of the cap current account, the current of current account within BOP, it encompasses transactions in goods and services along with transfers occurring during the current period. Current period means, let's say within one year. Generally, current means in the budgeting process or in economic process, one year, one year time period. So generally, the transactions of goods and servicing along with the other transactions that take place in the current year that means within one financial year those are those transactions are known as the current account transactions so calculation of current account if we see the formula is given here current account is equal to value of exports minus value of imports so this will be done plus net transfers from abroad net transfers means transfers made to the abroad minus transferred transfers that are done to the we can say the native country that is known as the net transfers so current account is the formula of current account is value of exports minus value of imports plus net transfers from the abroad right this can also be said as the next net exports you will be know so when the imports are minus from the uh, exports the net exports will come net exports plus uh, net transfers that will also give the current account formula right so net exports they represent the trade balance which is the net difference between the countries exports and imports apart from that there is trade in services also so trade in services often termed as invisible trade because actual services like uh, a lawyer present in India is giving, we can say, the legal advice to a uh, firm or company which is located in USA or United Kingdom. So that is an invisible service. We cannot, we can not actually see the service. So that will come in invisible. Similarly, a teacher or a tutor who is located or uh, uh, located in India, he is giving his educational services or teaching services to a student or to a university that is located in another country. So the services given by him considered as invisible. So in this way, the services, trade in services generally, the uh, that is known as the invisible. Right. So those include the transactions that do not physically cross the national borders. Right. For example, when a foreign country pays uh, for maintenance of its factory in the domestic country or for services provided by a domestic resident working in abroad, it constitutes the service exports. Right. So major examples, if you see tourism, right. 
Another example, famous example we can uh, take here is the IT exports. IT and BPO exports, they comp uh, comprise the major component in the invisibles or that for the matter, the trade in services, right? So a trade balance reflects a surplus when a country's exports exceed the imports. So then it is known as positive trade balance. Apart from that, if we try to understand the transfers from abroad, so transfer to and from abroad, they may include gifts or remittances sent by residents of one country to another. So in this area also, apart from trade, uh, trade in services, and also if we see the trade uh, uh, transfers from abroad or transfers from and to abroad. So here also we are very strong. This is also one of the uh, strongest area of us because one thing we are getting huge remittances remittances uh, from the uh, residents who are working in other countries they are sending huge remittances to india so you know very well india is the number one country holds the first rank in uh, amount in the quantity of uh, remittances that is received by the uh, all the countries in, in the world so closely india is followed by china and uh, mexico etc but india is the number one country in terms of receiving remittances because as you all know the indian workers they are working in gulf countries especially in west asian, west asian countries they are sending their remittances from there and also the some remittances are coming from the indians nris who are working and who are there in usa uk etc so they are also sending remittances for maintenance of their family etc so because of all these countries india has a very good position when it comes to remittances so both in trade in services and in remittances or for that matter transfers india holds a very good position so because of these trends only we could negate the problem that we have in the balance of trade that is actual trade in goods and services right so this is about the trade in services and remittances now we will study about the capital account right now we will study about the capital account so capital account generally uh, it which means is it's a long term investment it is a long term investment so in the budgeting process basically we consider the investments or transactions that made over a period of more than one year those are known as the capital account transactions right so if you see the definition of capital account the capital account of the balance of payments it records all the transactions involving assets so the assets can be in the forms of wealth such as stocks bonds and the government debt so the government debt the government indian government that is taking loans from the other uh, other we can say other countries and also from the multilateral organizations like ibrd imf etc so all these uh, come under government debt right so this is the definition of the capital account so if we see the asset transactions in capital account so the transactions in the capital account entail the buying and the selling of assets uh, right so purchasing of an asset results in a deduction in the capital account for example if an indian buyer indian buys a us car company it is recorded as a debt in india's capital account since uh, the payment is made in dollars indicating an outflow of foreign exchange from India. So if an Indian citizen he buys a US car company that is recorded as it is recorded as a debt in India's capital account because the, there is a outflow of dollars from the country. Right. So conversely opposite, uh, opposite to that selling assets like shares of an Indian company to US buyer registers uh, registers as a surplus in India's capital account here because the dollar flow is flow is coming into India so it is because of that reason it is it is recorded as a uh, we can say surplus in the India's capital account uh, we can say record right 
so if we see the uh, if we combine the accounts in the balance of payments so the balance of payments is the summation of the current account and the capital accounts so current account we have seen just before that is uh, trade in goods and trade in services and also the transactions that is current account and the capital account also we have seen it is the transactions in the wealth such as bonds uh, stocks and also the government debt so when we mix when we club or sum the current account and the capital account transactions capital account transaction that is known as the balance of payments so after that balance of payments that is current account plus capital account so a surplus or deficit of balance of payments arises when both current account and capital accounts combined exhibit a surplus or deficit so if this is positive it is known as uh, we have surplus in the current account uh, current account sorry in the balance of payments so if the this is negative we will call we have deficit in the balance of payments right so so uh, a deficit in the current account or current or capital can be offset by a large surplus in other account maintaining a balance uh, of payment we, this means is if we have a lot of problem even if you have a lot of problem in current account uh, as i explained earlier still we can over that overcome that problem through the capital account or through the for example if, uh, if it comes to india we are we are able to overcome that problem by remittances and invisibles so in this way uh, i mean the uh, surplus or deficit depends on both the accounts both the current account and capital account so a summation of these two gives the clear picture about the balance of payments so here is same thing has been ex uh, explained current account surplus so if the uh, inflows in the current account are more than the outflows then it is known as the we have surplus in the current account similarly capital account also if the inflows of dollars or for that matter the transactions are more than the transactions uh, to other countries that is known as the surplus so if it is vice versa if the outflows are more it is known as the deficit in current account or for that matter capital account so the whenever the outflows both in capital account and uh, including capital account and the current account if they are equal to the we can say inflows of the current account and the capital account it is known as the balance balance in the uh, bal we can say there is a balance in the balance of payments right right so similarly balancing of current and capital accounts if you see a current account deficit in a country it is typically offset by a capital account surplus in the economy so there therefore the surplus or deficit in one in one account often corresponds to the opposite in the other other account maintaining the equilibrium in balance of payments so if there is a problem for a country in current account that will be offset by the capital account inflows so that is known as the equilibrium in the balance of payments right. so now we will understand the difference between the balance of payments and the balance of trade so we have understood that balance of is a part sub part in the balance of payments that too in the current account balance of trade is comes under the current account part of the balance of payments right so balance of trade it constitutes a significant component of the current account within the balance of payments balance of trade especially refers to the net exports that is exports minus imports which is the difference between the value of exports and imports so it solely focuses on the trade of uh, in the trade of goods and services Dis, uh, disregarding the transfers into financial assets uh, and other transactions bot can be positive negative or zero indicating whether a country has realized a net profit or net loss or net exports right impact impact of bot if we see on overall economy 
so a positive bot balance of trade it may result in surplus uh, for foreign reserves of a country indicating a robust economy however as i earlier told already we have lot of problem here in the balance of trade so conversely the, if there is a negative bot balance of trade for a country it can lead to outflow of foreign reserves and the potential disequilibrium in the economy so because of this this reason only we are importing lot of crude oil and gold and also electronics so because of that foreign exchange is going away from the country however due to surplus or good position in the invisibles and also good position in the balance of sorry uh, services in trade we could we could i mean arrest this outflow of we can say dollars from the country right so if we understand about the balance of payments as against to balance of trade so balance of payments encompasses broader spectrum of transactions including trade balance net transfers and the trans transactions in financial assets so that we have already understood so this uh, paragraph or we can say this slide it presents the difference between the balance of trade and the balance of payments now we will understand the factors that are affecting or impacting the impacting the balance of payments of a country so for to understand that we have to separately understand the factors that are affecting both the current account and the capital account now first we will see the factors that are impacting the current account of a country so if we see those factors first thing is rate of inflation so this is one of the important factors that is that will be impacting the impacting the uh, current account of a country so if you see if there is a higher inflation in a country so it uh, when we compare to the trading partners other countries then the impact will be there will be cheaper imports increasing the purchase of foreign goods as imports tend to rise with the domestic inflation so when there is inflation in the country uh, so the particular person who will be exporting into india he will get more rupees for only one same dollar so in this way the imports will become cheaper in our country and there will be more imports so this will happen so <coughs> right so there will be increasing imports when there is inflation high inflation in the country so if there are if when there are lot of imports we will be having a negative impact on the balance of payments because the inflows are more than the outflows right so increased the cost of exports in the foreign markets so at the same time our exports to other country countries they will become costlier right reducing the foreign uh, dem uh, foreign demand for domestic goods thereby decreasing exports so when there is higher inflation in the country the exports will reduce and the imports will increase so another factor that will be impacting the current account is the national income or for that matter we can say it is the gdp so gdp or national income it will also be impacting the current account right so increase in the country's national income national income if that is there the higher domestic demand for foreign products causing a significant rise in imports so whenever there is a uh, higher growth rate in the gdp or national income so the disposable income with the people will also be more and there will be more demand for the foreign goods right so resulting a current account deficit so there will be more demand for the foreign goods so the inflow of foreign goods will be more uh, into the country then we have to pay a uh, more foreign exchange foreign exchange will go away from the country right so this is about the national income next is uh, another important factor is import restrictions by the uh, governments so to arrest the outflow of the foreign exchange some countries will impose restrictions on the uh, transactions especially on the imports uh, such and such components can only be imported this much so there will be limits on the imports so in this way government imposition of taxes or tariffs on imported goods raises their prices domestically 
leading to uh, reduced purchases purchases of foreign goods right so by domestic residents thereby improving the current account deficit right so another examples can be like quota restrictions on imports imposed by governments also they also uh, improve the current account uh, current account of a country right so another very important factor is exchange rate so this will also affect the current account of a country so the exchange rates which measure the domestic currency prices in terms of foreign currencies they also play a crucial role in current account right. so the re rear or real exchange rate we also call it as rear so it influences the current account a higher rear it is associated with lower exports and higher imports so whenever there is higher rear real exchange rate it will uh, results in lower exports and higher imports so whenever there is a lower rear uh, real exchange rate it is linked to higher exports and lower imports so try to remember this relation it is very very important uh, previously also there is a question on the rear and near real exchange rate and net uh, uh nominal exchange rate right so if we lower the re uh, real exchange rate which occur through currency devaluation it may lead to an improvement in the current account deficit so actually we have done this twice officially we have um, i mean manually or intentionally devaluated our currency during the uh, we can say 19 uh, during the crisis uh, of 1990s so there is a foreign exchange crisis in india so because of this reason we had to officially devaluate our uh, our uh, currency uh, once it has happened happened during the prime ministership of uh, mrs indira gandhi also so we have devaluated our officially our currency so that uh, there can be some improvement in the uh, current account scenario right now we will understand the factors that will uh, that are affecting or that will be affecting the capital capital account so first is government imposition of tax on foreign income so taxes levied by the government on income earned by the domestic investors uh, from the foreign investments can reduce the flow of capital right so this taxation discourages domestic investors from investing in abroad leading to lower capital outflows right so if there is a restriction or more tax imposed on the income that is generated by the indians over the assets or investments that are done on abroad so that will be discouraging for those investors so in this way it will prevent the outflow of we can say currencies or we can say investment from the country to other countries so this will be generally done to encourage the indians to invest in the companies or assets within india only so to encourage these type of uh, we can say uh, situation the high taxes will be imposed on the foreign next is impact of liberalization so economic liberalization policies they can significantly influence the capital account so this uh, also we can uh, realize through the 1991 economic reforms we have then the lpg reforms liberalization <coughs> privatization and globalization so these policies which aim to reduce barriers to foreign investors and the trade investment may lead to increased capital movements across across borders right next is ex uh, expected exchange rate changes so the changes in exchange rates also they will also influence the capital account right so they can affect the capital flows in the country right expectations regarding exchange rate fluctuations they influence the expected rate of return on foreign investments so investors may adjust their capital movements based on these expectations next is another factor that will be impacting the capital account is the changes in the interest rates right so rbi from time to time will be changing or manipulating the interest rates so those interest rates 
will also be impacting the capital account right so variations in interest rates relative to other countries they can impact the capital flows flows across the borders higher domestic interest rates they may deter capital inflows into the country as investors seek higher returns elsewhere conversely if a reduction in the domestic interest rates they may attract greater capital inflows into the country as investors seek favorable investment opportunities so whenever the domestic interest rates are low in a country that will help in attracting more and more we can say investments right so if this is uh, what is happening at present in india because the domestic policy rates are very i mean comparatively low in india when we compare it with other competitors like brazil mexico etc we have lower domestic interest rates so because of that reason there is a huge flow of foreign investments into the country both especially the flow is high in foreign institutional investments so fti still there is a lag in that we are not getting sufficient foreign direct investments however the flow of foreign institutional investments it is very high into india which shows a favorable situation so because of this foreign flow of foreign institutional investments only we have a very good foreign exchange reserves in the country foreign exchange reserves are very good in india because of this inflow of foreign institutional investors so if we see the uh, relation between the uh, balance of payments of a country and uh, the central bank of that particular country so if in india's case it is rbi reserve bank of india we have we have also to we have to understand the res- relation between uh, these two and also the role of a central bank in the balance of payments of a country so if we see the central bank of every country holds reserves of foreign currencies which can be utilized to address deficits in the current account so rbi also it will be holding and managing the uh, foreign exchange reserves in our country right so for example a country like india if we take the ex- uh, example of india only so india has a current account deficit of rupees 200 and a capital account surplus of 180 rupees resulting in an overall ba- balance of payments deficit of 20 rupees so th- if this is the example so what then the central bank will do the rbi will do the rbi can intervene by selling an equivalent amount of foreign exchange to importers for payments to foreign countries so because there is a deficit of 20 rupees the for the rbi it will sell 20 rupees to the importers who are importing the goods thereby balancing the equation right so conversely in case of capital account deficit the rbi may need to sell the foreign exchange for foreign lending uh, for foreign lending or repayment of foreign loans by indian residents so these transactions involving the purchase and the sale of foreign exchange reserves by the central bank they are termed as official reverse transactions so this is the role played by the central bank in the management of foreign exchange reserves right so if you see the balance impact of balance of payment surplus or deficit or in foreign exchange reserves if you see see the overall bop uh, surplus prompts the central bank to purchase foreign exchange assets and expanding the its stock of foreign reserves and increasing the money supply in the economy right so whenever there is a, a surplus for flow of bal- surplus in balance of payments the, which means the foreign exchange is coming into india and excessively so in the and that case the reserve bank or the central bank it will purchase the excess dollars that are there in the country that are there in the economy and reserves them in the foreign exchange so whenever the money used by the rbi to purchase the dollars or foreign exchange it will enter the economy and in this way the money supply in the economy will increase right so opposite to that 
whenever there is a overall balance of payments in deficit in the country it leads to the sale of par- foreign exchange so whenever there is a shortage so if there is a deficit in the balance of payments there will be shortage of dollars in the economy so for that matter the rbi will sell the foreign exchange reserves by the i mean it will sell the foreign exchange depleting its foreign exchange reserves and reducing the money supply in the economy right so whenever it sells the dollars into the economy the buyers who will be buying this foreign exchange they will pay the money in rupees to the rbi in this way that part of the money rupee supply will be reduced in the economy so in this way the money supply in the economy will be reduced all right so this is about the rbi and the foreign exchange and the balance of payments so alternately this will be the role of uh, i mean we can say the central bank this will be the role of central bank so in cert- certain cases the central bank chooses not to intervene in the transactions so we will see what happens in that cases so alternately if the federal bank chooses not to intervene in buying and selling of foreign exchange reserves the exchange rate that is the value of the home country relative to other foreign country currencies it will adjust automatically to eliminate the deficits or surpluses in, in the balance of payments such a system where the central bank of a country refrains from intervening in the foreign exchange market it is termed as fully uh, fully flexible exchange system or clean float of the currency right so however in india it is not there we follow a managed exchange rate managed exchange rate right so managed exchange rate means 99% of the times the exchange will be allowed to the foreign rate i mean the exchange rate will be allowed to adjust itself so whenever there is a, a severe discrepancies or we can say so the i mean the there is a lot of problem in the outflow or inflow or we can say value of the currency only then the rbi will intervene because of that reason we can say it is a managed exchange rate however certain countries are there they will not in i mean most of the countries uh, nowadays in the across the world all all the other countries are following this system only managed exchange rate so some countries like china etc they say that they are having a free flow of we can say exchange rate there is no intervention but indirectly their central bank will be intervening and uh, it tries to keep the chinese currency uh, we can say low the value of the uh, it will try to keep the value of the chinese currency low because there can be uh, we can say more and more exports from the country to other countries right so when it comes to balance of payments another important area we have to understand is that is current account deficit so we have understood right what is current account and what is capital account and another important aspect going forward in this is the cad current account deficit right so basically uh, current account deficit it occurs when a country is spending on imports exceeds its income so we have seen this case it is happening with india so when it comes to current account uh, current account india has lot of problems i said so india has having a current account deficit problem because our imports are our imports are much more much more than we had than our exports so in an open economy the equation uh, this is the equation for arriving at, at the we can say current account deficit we will see that later so if a country is spending on imports exceeds its income leading to an accumulation of debt with the rest of the world so however whether a cad should be a cause of alarm it depends on the nature of the expenditures in the economy so uh, i mean we should not uh, uh, on the face of the current account deficit can say that so it is a problematic area so it decides whether current account deficit is a problem or not it will be decided by the nature of expenditure 
so uh, sometimes the deficit in the current account can also occur from the high investments in the capital account side so because of the huge flows in the capital account so the current account deficit can also uh, can occur from that so in that case there will be no problem there should not be a problem however it is if the current account deficit happens because of huge imports into the country then it is a problem so entirely it depends on the nature of the transactions that are taking place in the balance of payments right so if now let's try and understand the nature of the or nature of the criteria or transactions how uh, how it is happening and whether it should be a problem or not for a country so if card is primarily driven by the productive investments uh, or government spending that contribute to the economic growth so if there are productive investments or government spending uh, which will be helping the economic growth it may not necessarily be alarming so in that case if the current account deficit is there this should not be a problem because a uh, economic current account deficit he is happening uh, because of the activities that will be contributing to the economic growth so in this case we should not worry right so in that case uh, if the activities whatever the transactions that are taking place they are contributing to the economic growth then we should not be worry about the we can say current account deficit right so conversely if the current account deficit it uh, is happening from excessive consumption or unproductive investments it could pose a serious concern for the economy so in our case we are excessively importing the gold which is a non productive asset right then it is a serious problem so this is what i was mentioning even the invest or expenditure that is happening to import the crude oil also so in the i mean it is not a long term investment so the crude oil i mean it is being used for the daily consumption so it is not a productive asset also so because of these reasons whatever the current account deficit we are having that is problematic that is a problematic thing for the countries like india all right next if we see the implications so the productive investments or government spending it is if a card is driven by productive investments or government spending it can be a sign of a healthy and a robust economy so in this scenario the debt accumulated due to the deficit can be effectively managed and repaid through the resulting economic growth right so if you see the excessive consumption or un- unproductive investments if you see so if the card is occurring due to these things uh, unproductive investments it may indicate underlying weakness in the economy right so such a situation could lead to unsuch unsustainable debt levels and hinder long term economic growth prospects so this is the case so we should reduce our uh, we can say investment or purchasing of gold because this is an unproductive uh, investment that too we are importing gold uh, gold demand is not met domestically in india we have to import almost 99% of the gold demand so because we have to lose precious uh, foreign exchange foreign exchange so because of that we have lot of uh, we can say current account current account deficit and this is a problematic area for the country because the whatever the investments are going into the gold they are not productive at all right so now we will understand how the current account deficit can be financed how to adjust the current account deficit so right so the current account deficit it may not always detriment to the, uh, de- detrimental to the economy we have seen that however we should uh, fill it in some way or the other now we will understand the methods through which we can uh, we can say <coughs> uh, fill the current account deficit first thing is portfolio investments so the portfolio investments they uh, they involve purchase of financial assets such as stocks and bonds into the domestic market by foreign investments so these investments they provide an immediate source of funds to finance the current account deficit and can be relatively liquid second thing is external commercial borrowings so external commercial borrowings they refer to loans raised by domestic entities from foreign sources 
including banks, financial institutions. So these borrowings, they provide access to additional funds to finance current account deficit, but they often come with repayment obligations and interest payments. Third is foreign direct investment. So the foreign direct investments involve foreign entities investing in domestic businesses, infrastructure projects, or acquiring stakes in companies. So the foreign uh, pro, uh, FDA provides long-term capital flows and can contribute to economic growth and the development while also uh, financing the current account deficit. So about the foreign direct investment, we have understood. So it provides the long-term capital flows where it will generally flow into the greenfield uh, in, uh, investments. I mean, where new uh, we can say avenues or uh, uh, we can say factories will be created or to expand the already existing capacities. So the foreign direct investment is a stable one. Apart from contributing to the economic development and the growth, it will also help in financing the current account deficit. Next is non-resident Indian deposits. So this is also one of the important, we can say, uh, avenues for filling the capital account deficit. So the NRI deposits, they refer to funds deposited by the non-resident Indians in domestic banks. So these deposits, they serve as stable sources of funding the current account deficit and they can help booster foreign exchange reserves in the country. So if you see uh, this aspect also, the deposits by the non-resident Indians, NRIs, they are also helping in a great way to fill the current account deficit gap in the country, right? So this is about the balance of payments and uh, uh, some of the aspects I have tried to cover in them. So try to be aware of all these things. And uh, I mean, this topic is also very, very important for the examination from the point of view of examination. So try to be uh, not knowledgeable about this topic. Right. So now we will see some of the questions that have been asked from this topic previously. So question, first question, it is asked in 2014. So both the questions I have mentioned are uh, the concepts orient, uh, concept oriented questions only. However, uh, when you prepare the budget, try to be cover, I mean, try to cover the aspects related to balance of payments also, especially in the economic survey. When you cover the economic survey, try to be aware of the topic that is external sector external sector then uh, there you will be covering the uh, data related to the balance of payments right the question is with reference to the balance of uh, payments uh, which of the following constitu uh, constitutes or constitute the current account the options are balance of trade foreign assets uh, balance of invisibles special drawing rights so here we have already understood that the balance of trade and the balance of invisibles, it is also called as trade in services. Trade in services, these two comprise the, uh, these two are included in the current account. So the rest of them, foreign assets and the special drawing rights, they come under the capital. Account. So the correct option is option C, options 1 and 3 are Right. Next question, it is asked in 2013. The question is, the balance of payments of a country is a systematic record of, so the options are all imports and export transactions of a country during a given period of time, normally uh, one year. So this is the correct explanation of the balance of payments. Rest of the explanations given, goods exported from a country during a year, this is only giving a part of uh, not even balance of payments, only balance of trade, that too, only exported what? Uh, economic transaction between the government of one country to another. So this is also a part explanation of the balance of payments, capital movements from one country to another. So it is only giving the capital part of the balance of payments. It is not including the current part of the balance of payments, right? So the correct option is option A. Uh, all the import and export transactions of a country during a given period of time normally a year. right right so this is all uh, this is all about balance of payments this is all for today thank you thank you for joining in the class uh, have a good day and see you next time until then have a good day